what we have here is a typical SAT math problem that I want to show you two different ways of how to solve this and kind of show you where if you think about math a little bit and do some problem solving, we can make some really challenging SAT problems uh, super simple. And this is what we teach in our SAT, ACT math boot camps. So here's the problem. If the square A, B, C, D, which I've drawn here, has an area of 25, and the area of the larger shaded region here is, uh, the larger shaded square is nine times the area of the smaller shaded square down there. The question is, what is the length of one side of the smaller square? And so at, at this point, there are no numbers on the problem, so let's start filling things in. We've got the fact that the area of the whole thing is 25, and all the shapes that are shaded in in the whole thing are squares. So pretty quickly, we can figure out that the side of one of these squares is 5. Okay, And the thing that we're looking for is the length of one side of the smaller square. So I will label that, this little section here, x. Okay, now that we have our diagram and we have some space to work, I'm going to show you the traditional way that someone would solve this or a student would solve this with algebra. And we need to set up some sort of equation to solve this algebraically. And this is typically how a high school student would try and solve this problem. So, I was told that this area is 9 times that area, and I know the area of this. The area of that is simply x squared, since we know this is a square. And the area of this, then, is 9 times that, so that's 9x squared. Okay? The other, the other thing I know is that this length is 5 minus this little piece, and that little piece is x. So we can label this length here to be 5 minus x. And since this is a square, I can write that 5 minus x squared like this. So that is how you solve this problem with the quadratic equation. Remember, on the SAT, you need to be able to do each of these problems in about one minute. And that took me considerably longer than one minute. So this is not the best way to do this problem on the SAT, even though it results in the right answer. Back to this point, if we weren't going to use the quadratic formula, then we need to figure out how to factor this into two binomial terms. So that's the other way to get the solution. But you have to stumble upon how to uh, factor this equation. Now there are algorithms for how to do that, but then you would have to have memorized all of those as well, and that's not, so, not uh, always the easiest thing to do. I'll show you a way you can solve this almost instantaneously. Remember, this square was nine times bigger than that square. So we might just notice that nine of these need to fit inside of here because it's nine times bigger. And I can then just simply go like this and see that now I've got nine of these squares inside of the, the square that was supposed to be bigger. So if this is x, so is this, and so is that, and so is that. So four x's have to add up to five. So four times x equals five, and therefore x is five-fourths. And I've solved this problem almost completely visually and almost instantaneously by making that visual understanding of the two areas, the relative areas. So I got the answer with no algebra. I got it really fast. This is the way you want to solve a problem if you want to do really well in the ACT or the SAT because you don't have time to do all of the algebra that's required to get to this result. And this is exactly what we teach kids how to do in our SAT, ACT math boot camp is how do you recognize the simpler ways to do these problems where they're almost completely obvious without having to go through a lot of steps. The other benefit of this is there's many, 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 many fewer ways for me to make a mistake doing it this way. You could see in all the steps I took before I could have easily made a mathematical error somewhere and then would have, uh, I'd be completely stuck.